Mm-hmm. Well, and I think I think they're aside from just the physicality of roping and what to do. I think <clears throat> I think me that was the reason I want to talk to him. Is I, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, areas where he and I like people could benefit from stuff between me and him because one what we talked about earlier like how we grew up different eras or whatever but then the biggest part of it all to me is me being as much older as I am than him and where I'm at not being close I, I like what there's a reason I like talking to him about healing and like watching him heal is because I'm still trying to get better you know what I mean so there's <clears throat> I'm trying to work back and a lot of stuff he does like I, I see a lot of myself in him at his age to where I'm trying to go back and you know what I mean like just feed there's a lot of stuff that he does like when he's up at the ropens or radios like I watch you know what I mean I don't watch a lot of people but I do watch him so <clears throat> you know what I mean like for for the people that think you know there's they're too old to get better or there's no there's I don't think there's ever a time that you stop doing that you know what I mean right. and this is a good example of like not trying to just be your own person. Like this is, it's almost like starting over for me. Like when I grew up, there was all these guys, like I'm picking a little bit from this guy, this guy, this guy. Well, I'm still doing that, but I pick a lot of stuff from him. You know what I mean? So to try to mold into not just trying to copy him, but a few things that he's doing, I'm trying to regenerate myself and keep, you know what I mean? Watching him makes me go back to my own self and be like, okay, hey, yeah, remember I need to do that. You know what I mean? It's like watching old videos. And it's funny because like it's the same thing, <clears throat> vice versa for me watching Jade. Like I think the holes that I know I have in my game that I need to do to get better, Jade does right. You know, so I'm same way at the rodeos and everything. I'm watching Jade like a hawk trying to say, okay, this is where he's better than me in this scenario. I need to implement this into my game, you know, and then I'll go home and work on it. And I'm trying to take stuff from him too, just – because where I grew up and learned how to rope a different way, that's where my holes are, is not, to me, not being as good at certain stuff as he is when it comes to the fundamentals and healing the steer he needs to heal. I mean, while we're on the on the topic, and this is just a kind of a public service announcement for everybody, is the one of the main reasons that I like talking to Hunter about healing or when, like, throughout the year, I've texted him and I don't, I don't send anybody hardly or ask very many people like, Hey, what do you think? I, what am I doing? Or what do I need to do? And I've asked him, you know, throughout the year and he sends stuff to me and we talk back and forth, but I've, I've never one time when he's asked me something, said something to him where he didn't say like, okay, yeah, I'm going to try that. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, that's the, that's the main reason I like talking to him about it. Is because there's a lot of times like people ask you stuff, but it feels like a waste of time talking because they don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they'll they'll say something like, "Well, I tried that," or "I don't know about that." Like, well, that I mean, which and, and it's fine, but this is this is me talking about people. If you really want to get better, no matter what level you're at, you need to be like that. If you if you're especially if you're going to ask, I mean, if you're going to go out of your way and you're going to ask somebody, and you don't want to hear it, well, you just want them to tell you that you're doing a good job. You know what I mean? And, and that's the kind of stuff that, that I don't like, you know what I mean? And I, so, I mean, me and Hunter have become, I mean, he's a lot younger than me. We've become good friends over the last few years. And that's the, one of the main reasons that I, I root for him to do good. And I like watching him rope and like watching what he's doing because I know it's not an, it's not an act. He's, he's trying to be the best healer in the world. You know what I mean? And I, from, which I'm still trying to be myself, but just from when I was 10 years younger than I am now, remembering what that felt like trying to get 10 years down the road, I just have a lot of respect for what he's doing and how he's going about it. And that's, you know, that's the, that's why I like watching him rope. And that's why I like talking about healing with him. And that's, that's also the cool thing. Like one thing that you've done for me, Jade is like a lot of people will just pat you on the back when you ask them, you know, they won't, you know there's something there that they whether they know or they don't that they could help you with and they're just like man looks good you know you're healing good but like one thing you've done for me is 
when I ask you, you have a, a detailed answer of stuff that you've gone through and stuff that you know works and stuff that you know that doesn't work. And like, you'll actually tell me, and then I can take that home and work on it and, and do whatever I need to do. And so. Which, and that's, and that's, that's kind of the main reason I say that, you know, people need to be that way is because I feel comfortable telling you the truth about stuff because I know that you understand I'm not going at you. Yeah. I'm not telling you, Hey, you're, you're doing this all wrong. <clears throat> which I've never, I don't feel like I've ever said something like you're doing this wrong, but you could try this mm-hmm. or try this. And it's just a, it's a lot easier to talk to somebody about it when you know that they're going to understand what you're saying and, and take it to not take it personal mm-hmm. and take it as, Hey, um, this is trying to help, you know? And so that's. And a lot of people don't understand like how detailed certain stuff needs to be to catch at a high level. As far as your left hand, right. what's in between your hands, your coals. You know, people think, oh, just get in time and heal. Right. But there's a lot of little things that young people don't know yet. And that I mean, and stuff that I still don't know that I'm trying to figure out that you could you could do or change this or get this in between your hands like this and like the coals and everything. Like it's not just your rope and it's not just there's fine detailed stuff that you've learned that have, have helped me along the way. And so what I'm getting at is like it's, it's People really need to take advantage of, you know, the videos and stuff that we have nowadays with X Factor and and being able to slow-mo stuff and look at stuff and, like, pay attention to guys like you. That That's something that's helped me, too, like, being able to watch stuff that you do and how you you deal with all the, like I said, your coals, your stuff in between your hands. You know, you're not just swinging and throwing. There's a lot more to it than that. Well, and that's that's the interesting part to me. And like we talked about earlier, um, just the different areas we grew up in, you know, I grew up in an era where there was only about like when I was 12 years old, there was me and there was Russell Cardoza, Brock Cresta, Justin Davis, uh, a couple of kids like Jim Cooper, um, a couple of kids from back here that if you were a young kid and you, and you roped good, everybody knew. Mm-hmm. Now there's young kids every, you don't even, you see them all the time. You don't even know who this kid is. And he's like little mm-hmm. Michael Camelot is 13 years old. And, a nine or 10 healer, whatever he is already that didn't happen back then. And so there's the era you grew up in. Everybody's already, you need to learn how to throw fast or that's the only thing it looks like it is. Mm-hmm. Well, all the stuff you just talked about, there's so much different, even though it's still catching two feet, there's a lot of stuff you got to change to go fast to catch. Mm-hmm. That's different. You know what I mean? A lot of people, I think they don't understand. And that's where, I think that's what's been good for us feeding off of each other is I learned one way so much. You learned the other way so much. You're helping me blend back into, you know, changing some things I need to do to be able to take some of the shots I need to take. And then I feel like you've fed off me some of the yeah. stuff that when you, when you don't need to do that, you mm-hmm. need to just catch the steer. How to do that. Yeah. Cause there's, mm-hmm. you know, that's where that's what's gotten to me. That's what's the hardest or has been the hardest thing for me to change is there's there's a, a setup that I've got to catch every steer by two feet. It's hard to, when you've done it for so long, it's hard to go make yourself go off of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there's a, I feel like there's a, there is a blend out there that could maybe do both, but it's, it's hard to do because you don't ever, you might be in catch mode and you might have a chance to throw fast. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to do it. Yep. You might be ready to throw fast. Well, you, all of a sudden something happens and you can't, well, you need to be able to catch that steer move on to the Mm -hmm. next one. You know what I mean? So that's a, it's opened up a whole new bag of stuff to me that I didn't even realize was out there. So, I mean, I think that's a, it's been an eye opener for me for sure. Just to know, cause you know, and not that I thought I had to heal and figure it out, but I thought there was a lot of stuff that I thought there was stuff that I knew that I just needed to work on. Not that there was almost all this stuff that I didn't even, Mm -hmm. didn't even know was a thing. You know what I mean? That's where, that's where I like, I've wanted to ask you, like when you were growing up or like when you, cause you got good really fast. You, I remember Clay Smith telling me, I don't know where it was, but you, you helped him break in some steers or something one day. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the first I really heard about you. He was like, man, this kid named Hunter Cook was over here. They, they say he's a four healer. He's like, but he wrote pretty dang good. And he said, I don't, he hardly missed a steer. I was mad that day too. <laughs> so he said, he goes, this kid, he goes, he was healing him angry and he hardly, I don't know. You guys broke in quite a few steers, right? I missed like, there was probably a hundred of them and I missed probably 10, but 
Yeah, he said he he didn't I miss very many because I was like Clay Smith's here, and I just missed this many steers. I was bummed out. But. Which and that's what made, I I told him when I said this kid wasn't a four because the next thing I know it's like two weeks later and he's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's where I, I've been curious, you know, because all the stuff we've talked about, I haven't ever really asked you like you know where you learned to heal or what what all you did to get to get as good as you did as fast as you did. So when I first started. uh in Vernon, Texas, there was me and a 68-year-old man that healed, and that was it. So, And my brother would head for me. But he was green, too. You know, he was just starting. And so all I knew is I figured out I wanted to do that forever. For the rest of my life, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what something that I can, you know, this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. So I just committed everything to it. You know, I, I quit playing sports, after-school activities hanging out with buddies all that quit and i just made up my mind and i had i was very fortunate had three or four good horses that they were just ranch horses but they ended up letting me heal on them they were good and i remember so i kind of really started when i was a freshman in high school you know i played around with it at junior high rodeos but i wanted to be a calf roper but when i made my mind that i was going to be a healer i was a freshman in high school and i got some steers and uh I remember I had a pretty good swing because, you know, I I wrote my whole life, but I had a pretty good swing and I kind of knew the idea of it. But I I heard, I kept hearing like on YouTube, I'd watch videos of people team roping and I kept hearing this stuff about timing. So like I knew I'd miss half and catch half. And I was like, well, it's got to be my timing. So for the next month at school, I would watch Drew Stu videos. He had a GoPro and I would watch Drew Stu rope these steers in time with his gopro and i'd see where his swing was when the steer was jumping and his swing would be over the back when the steer would jump and i was like okay well the next time he comes around to throw the steer's feet are going to be in the air so he's going to be in time so i studied that for about a month and then i i would go home every day and practice with it and i'm telling you i was i was a three healer but i could time up every steer and catch them so then i got to you know watching all the recordings I had of the NFR and stuff at home, and I would see you guys rope. And I'm like, man, these guys are throwing, I mean, first, second jump at the latest. So this is what I got to do. So then when I got home, I just, from then on, it was just when he turns, I'm going to make sure I'm in time, and I'm going to heal him when he jumps. And basically just did that for a year, and I went from a three to a six. And... uh then I just kept getting better and better and better doing that and went to an eight. And uh, then I started coming to like Stephen Bill to, uh, or not Stephen, to Austin's Tuesday night ropings because he'd have an open enter one time and I'd enter with whoever because I was just like, these guys have to see me rope if I'm going to get a chance one day, you know, and, and it's kind of sucked because you knew you were going to lose. <laughs> But you're like, if, if I enter and they at least this guy turns me three steers and I catch all three of them, surely one day somebody will need a pickup partner at one of these ropings. And so I did that for a long time. And then I tried to get my money back in like the 14 right. and the 13. You know, I'd, So I could still keep my money together because I could win in those ropings, but I had to lose in the open to try to let these guys see me to try to get noticed. But That's pretty cool. So that's, that's what I did. <clears throat> and that, I mean, just to to take that i mean for everybody that wants to get better i couldn't set it better myself that's exactly what you have to do Mm -hmm. that because i i get asked the most the most common question that i get asked all the time is what do i what do i need to do or what do i need to tell my kid to get better how can i how can i make him get better well you can't make someone get better Mm -hmm. they got to want to get better and so before you start watching the youtube you don't even know what timing is Mm -mm. you're just trying to heal the steers no don't even know what timing is figure out what timing is on your own, work on that. And then the other most common thing, which I, I don't know why it's hard to get across to people, but it is, is to go put your name out there. Mm-hmm. So you knew right off the bat, you know you're probably going to lose in the open, mm-hmm. but you're spending the money to do it to, because that's what I tell people all the time. They say, what do I have to do to get a better partner? Well, you need to enter because mm-hmm. that's exactly right. They have to, because it, it doesn't matter if you rope good, don't rope good. If somebody needs a partner, the first thing that they think of is who they see at the jackpots all the time. So they know, okay, I see Hunter all the time. He might need a partner. I'm going to call him. That's To me, that's the biggest step is 
they got to know you're there and they got to know you're dependable, going to show up, you're going to be there. Well, then to have that plan, know you're going to lose and get your money back in the 14, that, I don't know, that's a pretty cool story, mm-hmm. I think. Because, like, you know that if you've never entered an open open, but you're a nine or you're an eight and you rope really good, you know, Clay Trine's not going to just call you and say, hey, I've never seen you at an open open before, but Jade's right. not going to be here today. Can right, you, exactly. you know, but if he sees you every week and he's like, man, this guy catches a lot of two feet, he hadn't done that good yet, but, you know, I need a partner and he's going to be there. You know, the odds of you getting that phone call just went up a lot. Right. Oh, that's that's a pretty cool story. <clears throat> but yeah, that's to 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 me, the main thing is just like you said, you can't force anybody to get better. But if you want to get better, you know, having you have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, that of going and competing. Cause there's so many people that I see that like college rodeo kids and stuff that are really good, like heel two feet a lot and have nice horses, but they don't want to enter the open because they don't want to lose. Right. But that's just, if you do it right, you're only going to lose for so long before you get someone you can win with. So well, you just that's a loss sacrifice to, that. To me, that's a loss already. Yeah. Don't enter the open because you don't want to lose. Well, that's a, that's your first loss yep. right there. You know, that's a, it's like missing. You can guarantee yourself a result in the jackpot by missing this first one. Well, you don't enter the rope, and that's a no time on the first one for sure. <clears throat> but that, you know, that's to me, that's because that's something that people today, like there's so many resources now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got, you got X Factor, you got YouTube, you got all this stuff. You can go look at it, you know, like you, you watch YouTube to learn your timing. When I was learning, nothing. If I didn't know what timing was, <laughs> Well, you're you're out of luck. You got. <laughs> I might I might have known what it was, but didn't know it was called timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would go outside, rope my goat. When my parents were, like, we we have a cattle ranch and we farmed hay. Well, in the summertime when I'm home, too little to go drive the truck. Well, I just rope the goat till they get home. Yep. They had you know the old BFI tapes or US Open tapes. I watched those. Go out and try to mimic those guys, what they look like. But that's the only you know we didn't have any. Yep. There was nobody in Nevada. You know, as far as NFR guys, I didn't grow up around anybody. Mm-hmm. And so it's just funny to like how just to see in that span of time, how much stuff has advanced and, and come around to where, you know, you can get on YouTube and figure out timing if you want to bad enough. Yep. So Cause I, I remember there was a, I kept hearing about this timing, but I didn't know what it was, but I was, uh, you know, how they have the commercials on the YouTube before the video plays. Well, a time machine commercial came up on one of these team roping videos. And I'm like, Oh, that's what time is. Cause I could see the feet come back and yeah. I'm like, Oh, that's what they mean. And then I just looked up, uh, I can't remember, timing or something in a Drew Stu video with GoPro shopped it, uh, came up and he was talking about it. And you could see it while he was running the steer. And then it just clicked. So thanks, Drew Stu. Shout out to Drew Stu. <laughs> Your video helped me a lot. Oh, that's pretty cool. So for, for me, it was when I, the first year I rodeoed all year, like I, new guy not many people talk to me i'm pretty quiet just because i don't want to i don't really know anybody and i remember i was at walla walla at slack and i'm just sitting there and jade you walked up to me and you said hey man i just want to tell you congratulations on making it afar i think that's really cool and i'm proud proud of you blah 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 and so like jade was the first person to really talk to me and you know, because most nobody's really a jerk, but everybody's kind of to themselves doing their own thing. But Jade went out of his way to tell me that, and that that's when I started, you know, asking him questions. And like I knew I could talk to him about roping because he went out of his way to talk to me. And at that time, I honestly I didn't even know because I told myself before the year started I had a pretty good head start because I won the All American Finals. But I told myself I'm not going to look at the standings the whole year. I'm just going to, which I knew I was. I'd won quite a bit and I had a good yeah. chance, but I didn't know I really made it until you said that. And then I like, it hit me hard. I was like, golly, I, I, I just made the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I, and the reason, I mean, for that is I, I know, I mean, I, not everybody's this way and I, it doesn't make any sense to me why, but I've, I've never been a person who like other people's success doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Like we're all here. You're trying to win the world this year. I'm trying to win the world this year. Everybody's trying to win the world this year. If you're rodeoing, there's only one guy that's going to do it at the end of the year, but we're all after the same thing. Mm-hmm. And just because somebody's doing good, that doesn't make me mad. Or, you know what I mean? Like, and 
I remember the feeling, especially the first time. I mean, it feels good every time, but the first time, and then I just knew the story of, it was like that year when Clay was telling me, hey, this number four healer was over here and healed 90 <laughs> out of 100. <laughs> and all of a sudden you make the NFR. I was like, man, that's, I mean, I just, I respected it enough to, I thought it was worth, you know, telling you that mm-hmm. just because I thought it was, I mean, it was as cool of a story as I had heard of in recent times for sure. So, uh, that was, I mean, that was why, but then, like you said, I remember right after that, like, I guess that's kind of what started, you know, mm-hmm. our becoming, you know, better friends or whatever. But, um, I guess moral of the story is that you never know, like something as simple as that. You never know who, yeah. you know what I mean? You never know who you're going to be friends with. And it's just been cool now, especially, you know, when time goes on just to see what, you know, it's turned into. And, you know, I consider Hunter, you know, one of my better friends today. So, uh, I guess that's just, you know, pretty cool little backstory on the, on the whole thing, I guess. Yeah. Cause not, not at that point in time, like not many people would go out of their way to do that. And like, it's pretty cool how he did that for me. And I, I know it, it just seemed like he was just giving me a pat on the back, but it meant a lot to me being a young kid, you know, Jade Corkle's one, someone that I've idolized and learned a lot from, you know, watching videos and stuff growing up. And then he goes out of his way to do that. Well, then I feel like I can, ask him questions and and he can, and he'll tell me the truth and he'll, you know, help me. And then a lot of things that I've learned from him is, is, was things that I didn't learn the way I learned to rope because like, like I said, I, I just started throwing fast and, and then Jade is someone who's never, most of the time, never going to mess up when he needs to, to, to catch the steer. He's going to stop the clock every single time. And that's why he's been so, so successful, you know, with, three gold buckles and he's won every major jackpot you can win. And that, because of that, and that's where I'm trying to get to with my game. Uh, I don't want to just be known as the guy that could throw really fast and the guy that could heel, heel steers fast. I want to get to where I best of both worlds, because if I can do the best of both worlds, my, I mean, I should be pretty hard to beat later on if, if I could do that. So I just take things from Jade all the time of, you know, what do you do in this scenario or how did, what were you think, or how were you setting yourself up for this and this and go back and forth on being able to just have pinpoint fundamentals, but also having the reactive skills you need uh, to do good because you can't just be too fundamental and you can't be too reactive. I think when both of them meet in the middle is when the magic starts happening. Right. Well, I remember just the first, you know, just kind of like most of them start off the first few things he ever asked me is like kind of the usual like you know hey what do i need to do to to get better and you know this was you know and i, and I told him a few things like because what, what i think with when especially when somebody at a higher level asks somebody else at a higher level or i guess any level the guy that's given the advice i feel like you can you can you can go too far and you know there's a there's the stuff of like they asked you, so you want to say something. Well, maybe you didn't need to say anything. You know what I mean? Because I, I feel like there's a a lot bigger area to go that you can mess somebody up than actually help them. And as far as, you know, from what I remember at first, I kind of tried to just ease into some of the things because I, did, I didn't want him just to, here, here he is, he's making the NFR. You know what I mean? He's come this far and got this good this fast and he made the NFR. And now I'm going to go at him and say, oh, you need to do this, 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 this. Because he, one, he didn't. And two, there was, there was not that many things that he needed to change, but there was a few things that I could see that was just, could make life easier for him. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, and that's where, I mean, it's, it's the pot calling the kettle black here. I, he, he was, a, he's a guy that you can, you can see, like he tries as hard as you can possibly, like he wants to heal him fast and he wants to heal every one of them. And I remember telling him one time, I was like, man, you're like the, the border collie that sits right by the chute is ready to bite every chair that comes out of the gate. <laughs> so that's what you look like when you ride the turn, you look like the border collie sitting by the, right by the chute gate. <laughs> and I said, which that's the best dog. Cause he, he's, he's wanting to bite every one of them, but he doesn't do anything unless his owner tells him to. I said, but you might, you might want to go get a drink for, you know what I mean? Like don't sit by the chute all day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can, you can do what you're doing, but you don't have to do it that hard or, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then that led into, 
you know, then, cause I think, and that's where like, when we get into watching these runs, what I've noticed the most about him is, which, and I, I think this is what he's done really good is that he hasn't gotten away from, from himself, but he's, he's backed himself off into, cause I, to me, I thought it was all in, in the position that he rode that set him up for the fast shot, but it also committed him to that shot. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, he's, he's got two really, really good horses and this horse, especially this horse is, is one of the best ones at that position and riding for a high percentage shot. So I think that's, you know, cause to me it's horses can change somebody's life. You can be doing one thing. You see guys will be struggling, struggling, struggling. They get a different horse. All of a sudden they go to winning. You know what I mean? Like Lightning Aguilera this year. Lightning's talent with the rope is unbelievable, but he gets this gray horse. Now it makes NFR. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got a horse that fit what he's wanting to do and it helps him do that. Change this whole complete game around. Well, Hunter, he gets this horse and now all of a sudden he's making the short rounds at every big jackpot. Because doing it the other way, you can do it like that. But like, and I've told him this in the past too, like it's just hard to do it five, six times in a row just because of all the variables that can happen. Yeah, it might go your way one day. I said, but if you want to make the short round and place at every big jackpot, you got to learn to give yourself an opportunity if the shot's not there, that it doesn't look like anything even changed and you can pick right Mm -hmm. back up into stride and still catch the steer, live to fight the next round, might get to throw fast on the next one. And that's where I think, you know, combination of this horse and him understanding that and wanting to do it has made him even harder to deal with at the jackpots now. So that's what it always felt like too is before, you know, Jade helped me and stuff, I'd be leading the roping on three, leading the roping on two, leading the roping on four, mess up, get a leg, you know, and I'd be healing them fast and healing most of them, but not all of them. And then, you know, then it takes you out of the rope and then you feel like, you know, you did a pretty good job that day, but you didn't catch the one that mattered, you know, and then you fight that. Well, then Jade telling me, hey, just, you know, take a chill pill kind of, you know, like get to where you are, like, like he said, you're still yourself, but you start learning how to set yourself up, not for just, you only have that one throw and that's the throw you're going to take mentality. It's, if the throw is there and it's good, I'm going to take it. But if it's not, I can wait till the next one or the next one or the next, you know. So that's where he helped me a lot with. It's it's a discipline thing, really. It's just, which me growing up roping the way I did, it was hard because, not saying I didn't have any discipline, but that was just how I did it. That's just how I learned to do it. Well, then now retraining your mind after that many years to not think, get him, get him, get him. You know, now training your mind to say, when the shot shows up, take it. Right. That was it. Was a mental deal mainly, but just you have to change the way you think, and that's one thing Jade helped me a lot with. Is my mentality towards healing isn't just attack the steer and heal him now. It's get in a good spot, and when the shot shows up, take it. You know, I, I feel like that's one of the hardest things to do is because everything, especially now, because that the this is what's kind of funny to me is. The game changes all the time, but the one thing that doesn't ever change is that you got to catch. Mm-hmm. So until that changes, we have to do that. So, okay, now we got to do it as fast as we can possibly do it. It's hard. I know how hard it has been for me to go from thinking catch the steer to go fast. So I can only imagine how hard it is to that's that's because that's the first shot we see. So the shot he's wanting to take is the first shot we see. So now he's seeing what he's been wanting to see the whole time he's been roping growing up and he's got to not do it sometimes. I think that would be a way harder situation than somebody like me who grew up when they turn, they take that first jump. Okay. Well, that's when you time the steer. He hits, comes off the ground, pick up your timing, get a couple good swings over his back, catch the steer. So I'm just trying to throw faster. He's trying to, unlock what he's done his whole life of throw, 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 go past that and find another shot. I can, but you know, just like everything being 
it's all a mental deal. It shows how much people are capable of doing if you really want to do it. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's just a taking control of your mind and deciding, Hey, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And just having that, like you said, the discipline part, that's what sets people apart to me because there's a lot of guys that rope good, but having the mental discipline to no matter what throughout a whole day of jackpot and not let yourself, you know, just the, the ability to focus like you have to focus now, it is night and day difference from when I started rodeoing till what it is now. Cause now it's like your rodeo not the jackpots, mm-hmm. you know, like this, the capital is a six head jackpot. That's a six head rodeo pretty much. You know what I mean? And guys can do it all day. There's tons of guys that can do it. And so the, that's, that's what's changed the most to me is just the mental, the mental capacity you got to have and the discipline you got to have to be able to, to get through days like that. It's, it's not for everyone. I don't, you know what I mean? It, it's a, it's something that not everybody can do. I don't think unless, Mm -mm. I mean, it it just takes a lot. So the fact that he's done it as fast as he's done it, you know, there's not very many guys that have, that ever even get that good, but let alone get good as fast as he's gotten good. Well, what I, what I was saying, what I think, what Hunter struggled with in the past that he's gotten through, which is so hard to get through was like the times he was talking about, like he'd be in the lead of a jackpot by a ways come the third or fourth round steer would hit. He's throwing, get a leg or miss when he could have waited that out, go another hop, two hops still have the lead because he was thinking, you know, like he was thinking, just be aggressive, get in and take that shot. Well, what he was setting himself up for was having to take that shot where he, where he rides now to where he was riding. Then there, there's a point where you can ride down the arena to where your horse has to come off of it so much to make the turn that you lose your forward momentum. And that's kind of what, in my opinion, was what was happening to him before. So he, he's taking that shot because he's, he has to take that shot. He's riding for that shot. Well, his horse knows it. Everybody knows it. Great when it goes good, but what he's, what he's done now is he's getting in a spot where he can take that shot, but he doesn't have to take that shot. So now he gets in the lead by a second at a jackpot, come the third or fourth round, steer's not ready to be healed. He doesn't do anything, just keeps swinging, keeps riding, goes one more swing. Now you're still in the lead at the jackpot. And from one healer to another healer, knowing what that takes, he's had to go through a lot to get past that you know i mean that that takes more discipline than most people will ever have to back yourself off wanting that shot so bad to not taking it when you want to and i don't i mean i don't know how to explain i know i know the feeling so i i I can understand it but it's hard to explain how hard i think that would be for him to do and so i mean commend him for what he's done because it, it couldn't have been easy for him that, to do that. A lot of what Jade said about the momentum of your horse and how everything is going down the arena, that was the hard hardest part for me because for so long I'd stirred all, more, all my momentum to be peaking as the steer's starting to turn and then the momentum comes back to you. You let off with the crossfire jump and you're putting it down with the first jump. So like, my horses and me didn't know how to flow the momentum through the turn. So like the momentum would be building, 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 power on my rope, my horse is running hard, and then as the steer's head picks up and the crossfire jump happens, then all the momentum dies, horse hits its butt, turn in, I let off, and as he jumps away from me on the first jump, I get him. Well, through my eyes, I stay ahead of him, I'm ahead of the crossfire jump, and then I'm just bringing it. So regardless, I know where he's about to hit, but I don't know what his legs are going to look like when he comes up. I don't know if his head's loose. I don't know if he's crunching back. You know, it was all just reacting to the crossfire jump, bringing it on the next jump, no matter what. So I had to, so like watching Jade, Jade can stir his momentum through the turn, and he can take the first shot because he's going the same momentum as the steer is. Or he can keep going with the momentum of the steer and go first, second, third, whatever he needs to, whatever. Because, you know, he might come out of it on the first jump 
right legs back, left legs forward, fighting his head. Well, then he just keeps the momentum flowing, gets another swing over his back. Well, the next jump, he sees the feet come together and lift. Well, then he just brings it with that one or the the third jump or the fourth jump, whatever the steer allows him to do. So, like, I, I had to really study where Jade was at down the arena and had to ask him a lot of questions and then had to ask him how to practice to build on that to get to that point. And then I still don't have it exactly how I want it, but it's getting better about stirring my momentum the right way and, and knowing how to keep the power and keep the flow through the turn to be able to take whatever shot I need to take and be able to see all the things I need to see to take the high percentage best shot every time. And it'll blow your mind how, like where I used to heal a steer and be 6'2", I can go another one and be 6'5". And I never realized it until I started doing it. You know, you really aren't losing that much time because if you heal a wild one on the corner, you have to hold your slack extra long, header has to pull him away, then you dally. Well, yeah, you made a cool shot and you healed him as fast as you could, but you can go one more, heal him, everything happens tight, you dally with all three coals in your hand and you lose two tenths. I mean, I'll take that all day on a high percentage shot rather than having to pull something off every single time. Right. And then I feel like to kind of add to that, there's, there's certain times where you could be faster, even faster that way, because like you said, like when the steers come out of their wild, their legs are spread. You got to, you throw there, but you got to wait to catch them and they get away from you a little bit. The header's already facing. Well, now the head rope's loose. Flagger waits for that to get tight. Now you might be six, eight that way, Mm -hmm. six, two the other way, you know, and that, that's where. You know, I feel like anything where I could help you at all with that was because it takes a lot of time of the to get those situations happen. You know, what I mean, like I've just seen over the years enough enough times where one more swing sets it up to be faster. To know, you know, I, I would have loved. I wish I would have known that when I was younger mm-hmm. because yeah. I know I missed a lot of steers same kind of way that you did, not knowing. Hey, in that situation, one more swing, you would have been even faster mm-hmm. just because of the way the run was setting up. Because today, like, if the head rope is loose, the flagger waits for it to get tight. Which I mean, obviously they should. That's their job. But you can make not as smooth a run. Everything gets tight faster. They when it, the head rope's tight when they face, they flag you. Well, now all of a sudden, if they notice it loose, they make sure it's tight. Then drop the flag. Over six runs, over one run, it's a long time. Over six runs, that's a long time. Mm-hmm. And then the risk of getting a leg doing it that way well then there's five more seconds it just doesn't it doesn't add up anymore you know what i mean doing it like that and and for us too like when you're healing at a high level you know in your peripheral you can see the steers getting loose and you'll have to hold your slack extra or try to do extra work with your slack because you know chances of you losing a leg just went up a lot more so then you're holding your slack nearly sliding an extra cool that's another couple tenths right but I'm, I'm glad you said that too. The the peripheral vision, I feel like, which I, you know, I mean, without knowing, I would have say from what you were doing before, you didn't have as much of that Mm-mm. because the shot you were setting up has you looking for one spot. Just like, just like when you're standing right next to someone, you back away from them. You can get far enough away where you can see from head to toe. Mm-hmm. Closer you get to them, the less of them you can see. It's more like a pinpoint. Right, yeah, yeah, and so I can see where that was. That could open up a lot of, because to me, like as fast as everything has to happen, well, the the more we can see, the more we can do. Yep. And and you're, that's where I feel like what you've done so good at now is, you're 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 realizing, I can I can see you realizing that now more than before, giving yourself you know the chance of more you can see, the more you can do, and you've done it really fast, and that's what. That's what I've noticed here lately. You, you're doing a really good job of is making yourself, you know what I mean? Having the discipline to make yourself do all that. And you've done a, done a really good job of it. Like that's just all the things that you've little things along the way that you've told me kind of help build me into being able to be better at that. You know, I, like I never even thought about peripheral vision or, seeing what the steers like you know i just thought when he when he jumped you're supposed to throw it <laughs> for a long time what uh <clears throat> well i mean this i'm asking this question for now too and and then were you do you watch the head rope go on or did you used to 
Have I, you always watched the head I've always you, watched the head rope go on. Mm-hmm. And, but I feel like my, my focus has gotten better transition into where it's not just because it used to be pinpointed on the head loop and then pinpointed on me throwing now it's more like seeing the whole thing because i don't know if you feel this way but i've run enough steers now that i can nearly know what a handle is going to look like by the way a head loop hits and i don't know if that sounds dumb or not but you know if it hits deep around the neck I'm probably going to pick up because he's going to hit, hang a little bit, and then big jump. Or, you know, if it hits tight and head turns, I'm going to start kicking and pushing down more because the steer's probably going to hit and go fast. If it's sloppy, you know, if the steer's head crunches, you know, there's all different, just from practicing that you've seen that, you know, you know, different head loops make the steers do different things, I think. Well, and that, I'm glad you said that because that's, that's been the number one thing that I've, I've never understood when people say they don't watch the head loop. Well, the feet are running down the arena regardless. Mm-hmm. And just just the amount of things you just listed off, the the selection of handles you could get, there's even more of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So to me, I, I, it's never made sense to me. If you're, not, if you're not watching that, well, how do you know? You can set yourself up for success knowing what's, you know, ideally or probably what's going to happen. You can't see any of that if you're zoned in looking at the feed only. And, you know, like guys, especially now, start to reach whatever. If they miss their dallies, slide a little rope. You can see that too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're in a good enough spot, there's, I know for me, there's times where that'll happen and it doesn't affect anything yep. because you can adjust for it if you're, mm-hmm. if you're ready for it. And so that's a, that's a huge thing to me is, you know, I would, I would suggest to people watch mm-hmm. the head rope. Yeah, I never understood why people were so against doing that because, like you said, like you can almost raise your odds of catching more because right. you you are ahead of – you know exactly what's – or have a good idea of what's about to happen. Right. You know, if steer drops his head when the head loop goes on, you better pick up. He's probably about to hide his hips and slow down. Or if steer throws his right horn up, he's about to hit down the arena and then come back and jump. You know, you right. just – from running a lot of steers, you, you start to learn these things. and you can set yourself up in the spot you need to be in. Right. No, I think that's, that would be, you know, as far as giving advice to people, kids, anybody, that's, that's, that's where it starts to me Mm -hmm. that you set up everything, everything we're at the headers win. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we can't do anything until they turn the steer. So why wouldn't we be paying attention to how they're about to turn the steer to be able to do our job the best we can do it? I would, I would say that's the number one thing that, because I, I know that that if if you don't know where you're supposed to ride down the arena, if you start watching the head loop and watching what the steer's doing, you'll start riding better before you even understand that you're riding better. Mm-hmm. I feel like you know, just by if you make enough runs, just to learning to read the steer and read what's going on, like you said, it just takes the amount of time of making enough runs to do it. But that's a that's a very good point. And one another thing I've learned from Jade is like there's so many scenarios that can happen and so many things that can go on throughout a run. Why wouldn't you try to learn the things that give you an advantage as much as you could? You know, just the little things like, like we just talked about with the head loops, like that's easy to practice. All you got to do is run steers right. and pay attention to what's going on. And cause there's so many variables, like any, any little advantage you can give yourself. Why not? work on that every day that's something easy to work on every day well and and to take that even a little farther like i that's why i like watching other people i watch when other people make runs i watch what the steer does based off what that head loop did Mm -hmm. you know i mean when when everybody every run that i watch at a rope and or a rodeo you see stuff happen and like wow that steer did that because because of that yeah because i mean it might not happen for you say for Mm -hmm. a while but you see somebody else do it you can feed off that and learn stuff off that because you never know what you never know what's going to happen when you make a run. So why not take advantage of every every run you see, mm-hmm. whether it's you healing steer or not healing steer, get something out of everybody. And yeah. one thing I wanted to ask you too that that I have thought about a lot this year, like you've been rodeoing long enough and you've been to all the rodeos multiple times. Like, do you notice that? being in a little different spot and different arenas and different setups helps you more. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like take Casper, for instance, it's narrow barriers, pretty long. 
Like I feel like sometimes you can set yourself up in a better spot there because they're going to be coming back. Right. You know, it's narrow. They're going to, the steers are usually medium steers to pretty good. Like, I feel like that's not really a place you get wide and high. Right. You know, yeah, hillbox I mean? is right on the right yep. fence. Yep. But then, so, you know, they can't go right, but they can dang sure go left. You yep. know what I mean? That's, I've, that's a good point. Cause there's, that, that's the funniest thing to me that I've noticed over the years rodeoing is how many, extremely inconvenient shaped arenas yep. that we rope in. You know what I mean? Like there, there's so many of them that aren't ideal. You know what I mean? That, and that to me, that's what separates a lot of people is like how many guys you see at Casper take the normal rodeo start, <laughs> duck the steer left. And now they're, now you have a 0% chance. Even if you do catch, you're too slow because yep. one step left there, they can't go right. Mm -hmm. And if they do, that's perfect. Yep. One step left there, your headers, now your U turn and can't get a good finish, probably too slow. Yep. You know, and I, I think paying attention to that, I mean, I, that's the first thing that I, or Red Bluff, scores long, left fence is right on the head box. Why would you go before your header? Yep. You know what I mean? Like there's just a, because, you know, as much as we can't do until they turn the steer, we can do a lot. I mm -hmm. think, you know, like Cheyenne, places like that, like catching up, catching up the same time as your partner. Unless there's a lot of right or you need to do something to help. I mean, we, we can help their job be easier mm -hmm. just like they can help our job be easier. I mean, team roping for a reason, you know what I mean? But you can make it hard on them too. Like you see guys do that sometimes at arenas where it's just like, man, you, they'll be mad their header missed. And it's like, mm -hmm. man, you made it miss. Yep. You know what I mean? I, I think a lot of times, but that's one thing I've really thought about a lot this year is you know, that a, a healer can actually up your headers percentages just by doing a good job in those different setups, right. you know. Well, and that's, to me, that another compliment to you for understanding that is, because I think that's why a lot of times, you know, they say it takes, it, which it does take experience, but that's that's why it takes experience to to come up with stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I would I would stress to young people, just like what you just said, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like there's a lot of people that that probably don't. They think the header's job is to score and turn the steer. Well, you can you can help him score and turn the mm -hmm. steer by just the position that we ride, and that's why position to me has been so important my whole life. Is I feel like I don't know the reason why, but I feel like for whatever reason I've kind of always understood that from a young age. Mm -hmm. Like just jackpotting at home, like you realize, hey, if you don't let the steer duck right, you don't let him keep the steer straight, your header is probably going to catch. You can make a low number header catch. Yep. You know, and you, if you catch up at the same time, you can make steers, you can box them into where steers get better. Yeah. And like you said, the shape of the arenas, you can, you can do a lot of things to, to set your whole team up for success that I feel like it'd be even tougher if more people mm -hmm. realize that. So like that's you the can, secret's out. You, so. can, you can watch those slacks and say, you know, the first 10, 15 runs. And you you can tell what patterns are making the good runs, right. what what steer patterns are making the fast runs. And right. you'd be like, okay, well that's that's kind of the sh what we're going at. You know, whether it's one step left or leave them alone. You know, it could be either or with with the arena shape. But you know, some places a step left and them guys are being four two, and the guys being straight making a great run are being four eight. Right. You know, and that and I, it's it's kind of a place that's always been like this, and I don't know why which the barrier has gotten longer there seems like than before, but runs happen fast to the left is like walla walla. Yep. To the left way faster. Yeah. And it, it doesn't more left than ever at walla walla is better than anywhere, any arena in the world for some reason. But. And I it, watched, I don't, well, like Luke posted those videos to his glasses there this year and our first year went straight and we were five flat or four, nine. And like when Luke leaves the box, he looks like he's a long ways away from the steer. Okay. The second one were four, seven, or eight, and the steer come left really hard. Yeah. And it looked like when Luke hit the barrier, he was on top of the steer. Right. So just that that setup made left. And I way and I remember because I was when I seen your guys. I thought you guys made an awesome run. I thought you guys won the day money in your first one, and then don't even place in the day money. <laughs> yeah, didn't even win a chance. But and it's just. I mean, it had a decent steer too, but mm -hmm. steer goes straight. And for whatever reason, guys with worse steers are going left. And now they're being 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, yep. And that rodeo is, is extremely tough every time. And it doesn't seem like it should be. Mm -mm. 
like steers seem like they are fresher and they try barriers out there a little bit, but you get them going left there, you got a chance for some reason. All of a sudden they just start making runs. Yeah. Of course. I I think the reason Jade uh, can ask, feels like he can ask me is because he knows that I've watched him really, really close for a long time now. And I know what he looks like when he's spot on. And, but also for me, that's kind of hard because you're talking to someone that you idolize and that you think so much of and that you've worked to be more like them. You know what I mean? So, but us being close friends, you know, I, I just know what he looks like when he's roping at his best because I've seen him so many times do it. So, you know, for me, it's just, he knows, I know that he doesn't mean no, nothing towards me. Like when he's telling me, he's just telling the truth. And I feel like he knows the same way. Like, Hey Jade, when you're roping your best, you're doing this. And right now you're, this is kind of lacking right now. And it's something as simple as that, but also it's, it, it's cool for me because it lets me know that Jade thinks that much of my roping that he would ask me what I think. So it's, it's sometimes it's a little scary because you're like, man, this is my hero, and I <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. And then, but we're close enough friends that it's good that I've I've seen him rope so much at a high level, and I and I've studied him so much. I know exactly. I can watch him and be like, uh, he's this is he's having a little trouble with this right now. This is why he's not doing what he normally does. Or, well, and, and I remember a distinctive time this year that I asked him. He was exactly right. And I, what's hard, what to me, what is hard about when you when you hit a certain point, like I feel like I know what I'm doing. I feel like Hunter knows what he's doing, and I feel like that sets you up to not realize what you're doing wrong. Sometimes when it's like you can you can be doing something that you don't pick up on just because it doesn't it won't be enough to feel out of the ordinary. And that's where, like when I, when I, when I hit that point, you know, there's a, there's a couple guys that I'll ask and he hit it dead on. The one time this year I asked him, he said, man, it, he says, no, you don't look like that at all. But it looked, if I had to pick out one thing, it looked like you were fighting your rope speed. Well, as soon as he said that, I was like, gosh, dang, that, that's exactly you know, and I remember it in this, and I told him this too. I said, this wasn't an excuse, but I remember my arm was kind of hurting. It was giving me some trouble at that time, but that's, that's what was happening is whatever, whatever was going on, that's exactly what I was doing wrong. So whether it's my arm hurting or me just not doing it. Okay. Now I know what, that's what I need to, that's what I need to get fixed. But there's certain times, like, especially like if, if my arm's giving me a little trouble, I won't, I'll, I've tried to fight through it enough that I won't realize that I'm not swinging like I need to all cause I'm trying to swing mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. So whether I'm swinging hard enough or not in my head, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm having to work to try to swing. So that's where, that's where the mix up happens for me, not picking up on it, say. And I remember the day he said that I was like, gosh, that's, you know, so, and that's the good part about having somebody that you can ask is now I, I can get it done before the next place I go instead of wasting however many more places I was fixing to go doing the same thing over and over and just losing, losing, losing. Well, now, okay, now that you say that, I can feel that. You know what I mean? And it, that's what's weird to me about roping is I don't know why it takes sometimes somebody telling you that to feel that. I mean, as soon as he said that, I could refill that whole day and he's exactly right. Well, why couldn't I feel that while I'm doing it, you know, I mean, that's, and that's kind of a funny thing to me about roping is, is, and that, and I guess where I'm going with that is that's why I feel like if you have somebody, you feel comfortable enough asking stuff, you need to ask, you know, I don't, don't ever get too prideful to ask somebody because it could just be one little simple thing. And, but it could be a huge thing at the same time. And I feel like that, that was one of those deals where not that big a deal, but it's a huge deal for what was going on because I wasn't, I couldn't catch, you know, I was literally fighting for my life out there, not getting the job done. Well, now I know why fix it by the next jackpot. You know what I mean? So that's a, it's a, it's a huge tool you can use if you're willing to use it and not be prideful and not think, Oh, I'm not going to ask this guy. Or I'm not going to ask that guy. Cause I know what I'm doing. You can't be like that. If you want to be successful, I don't think, you know, I feel, I mean, I feel like personality has a lot to do with it. You know, if you're, if you're more of an aggressive person or, or, you know, more of a mild type 
tempered person. But and and this is this is the reason I feel like a lot of guys like rodeo and over jackpotting. It's simple to calculate it, calculate your risk at a rodeo. You know, I mean, unless you're at the beginning of a slack, you pretty much know it probably is going to be tough. If you're sitting at Red Bluff, it's a four header, and you're the last team out in the first round. That's that makes it simple math. You know what I mean? You can because it's just this one steer that day. That's a four head rodeo. You catch four steers, decent clean. You're going to win good in the average. So you can calculate right there. Well, do I want to win? And the day money's on the way. Do I want? To, am I going for the average? What do I want to do here? Jackpotting, especially ropings like the capitalist this last weekend, six head. Now that's where. But you know they're paying probably six or eight monies. So if you get a leg, you know what I mean you need to go fast. But if you're catching along pretty good, you know you can make six good clean runs and probably win something. Well, it's like, well, do I want to try to make six really good? runs and try to win first but i feel like that's where the the calculating comes in at the jackpots and that's where to me i feel like that's why some guys like rodeoing over jackpotting just makes the math a lot simpler yeah like like jade said it has a lot to do with your personality and like i talked about earlier having to change my mentality especially for jackpotting you know instead of just being on attack mode all the time and now we're trying to just take the best shot we can every time. But for, for me also, a, a, a lot of things that I've learned along the way is, you know, as you're, as you're growing and getting better, as your partners get better, I feel like the risk kind of, you know, all of a sudden you're up with a guy that turns them all to be five and six. Right. Us as our job, all, all our job is, is to shut the run down, you know, stop the clock. If he's turning them to be six and we're six, that's what that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing right you know but a lot like earlier in my career as i'm you know roping with young guys like me too and we're not as dominant yet you know i i tried to put a lot of the risk on me you know if he turned him to be you know seven flat i was going to try to be six eight and just try to stay in there but i didn't win that much either but at that point in time me trying to compete with these guys I felt like that's what I needed to do to give myself a chance. And, and it worked a lot, but it also, it would cost you some too. So then me learning along the way and, and as the partners get better, now it's just roping with the headers we get to rope with. If we stop the clock and they're turning them where they're turning them, nine times out of 10, we're going to be good enough to win something. Right. And, yeah. Something has to go pretty bad to be yeah. just too slow. You know what I mean? They're very rarely do does, Clay turn one for Jade and you go, oh, they're they're out of it. They're too slow. You know, if if Clay does what he normally does and Jade heals them, they're right in the middle of the rope every time. And I feel that way about my partners too. You know, I get to rope with Luke, Chad, and Cody at the go threes. If I do my job, I and I mean I should be fast enough to win something. And just having the mindset of like I read an article not too long ago that Martin Lucero wrote and he said what he did so well in his career, he thought was uh, he never beat himself and that that meant a lot to me thinking that way and that's something that jade's always told me too you know like i he does what he can do every run he does all he can do he doesn't try to do more than he's allowed to do and he doesn't do less he does what what he's given is what he works with and he makes the best out of it every time and that's what martin was talking about it you know if if my header turned all the steers to be fifth that day, we won fifth, right. you know, and, and living and dying by that can, I think, make you very successful later on. Well, it's funny you say that too, because I, <clears throat> you know, I always wanted to, I always wanted to win, but I always, I hate missing so bad that it, it ruins. If I miss one, it would used to ruin my whole day. Like I couldn't come back and win with another partner almost. And I got to buddy with Martin when he was up with Luke for a couple of years. And that's so why it's funny you said that about him because that's where I learned that it was okay. Because I, if I had to pick one thing that I never saw Martin waver from was that it didn't matter if they were behind in the standings, ahead in the standings, needing to win, needed to go fast, needed to go slow. He did his job for, I buddied with him for two years. He did his job how he was supposed to do it for two years. And I got to see it every rodeo firsthand. And and he probably doesn't even know that I learned that from him. But that's that's where it locked it in for me that 
he he never wavered from that. And I I always I remember thinking how cool that was that his mental game. He, I I'm sure. I mean, he would get. I could tell however many straws he had in his mouth. You could tell how ang- angry he was. <laughs> but I never saw him get angry or never throw a fit. Never got mad. But he might be chewing the heck out of three straws in his mouth when he when he would mess up. But he'd come back on the next one and he would do his job again. And I I remember. I just always remember thinking how much respect I had for for that. And he he caught so many series. I mean, him and Luke made the same run after run after run. And he never, never wavered from that. And I always remember thinking how cool that was that no matter the situation, he didn't, he never got away from it. And that's what, so he helped me a lot with that. 